Hey everybody! In today's tutorial, I am going to play along with this week's Mixability Challenge at Split Coast, hosted by Sweet Miss Daisy, who you may know as Anna White. And the challenge topic today is whitewashing, and you could interpret that a couple ways. You could leave a lot of white space, you could add some white with a medium, which is what I chose to do, or you could interpret it another way. I am starting with the July My Paper Pumpkin kit, and I love this little coffee cup image. And you'll notice my superhero hand. You might be wondering what's going on. Sometimes I don't change out of my superhero uniform before I sit down to stamp, so that's why I still have it on. Actually, it is a smudge guard, and I will talk about that in a minute. I'm stamping the little coffee cup in crumb cake on a crumb cake card base. And then I stamped one on a post-it note and cut it out to use as a mask because I want to make these cups look like they're inside of each other. I think we used to have a little stamp where the cups were stacked inside of each other. I can't remember. Now, once you've done two of them, and I, I kind of want one going the other way, I can actually use the post-it note to figure out where the next stamp needs to be. I want to make sure that it's not covering up part of that handle, but I do want it pointed the opposite way of the second one. So I just kind of take a peek at that, and then I can move it down and cover it up once I get an idea of where that needs to go. So once that's in place, I can stamp my third cup. Did I already say that was crumb cake ink? It is crumb cake ink. I basically don't want to see the stamp outline. This is going to be like no line coloring. So that's why I chose that color. So that looks good. And now I am going to take my absolute favorite colored pencils in the world, my Luminance pencils. And since it's a whitewash challenge, I am starting with a base of white. This is actually one of my favorite things to do with Luminance pencils because you can lay down a bunch of white and then come back with color and blend back with white, but then you always have a little natural highlight underneath your color if you just want to um, leave some spots blank and let the white underneath show through. Now you'll see me moving my fingernail around the edge of the image. What I like to do is move my fingernail up to the edge of the image and then I can color really fast, but the pencil will hit the edge of my nail and so it won't go outside the stamp image. So that's what you see me doing there. Now once I've put down a layer of white, I come in with my color for the coffee cup, which in this case is kind of a turquoise. And I just go around the edges where there would be natural shadows. But you'll see me going back and forth between the turquoise and the white. And this is really important because you need to build up five or six layers of this oil-based pencil for it to really get smooth and creamy and for your pencil lines to go away. Now I'm shading this cup with a dark purple. That's a, a good shadow color for any blue. It adds a little tiny bit of warmth, but it's compatible. And so it's a great shadow color for actually both red and blue. So it comes in, it starts looking a little harsh when you first put it on, but again, you just go back and forth and back and forth and blend those, those out. And in the end, it'll look very, very harmonious. So you don't have to be too sparing with your shadows at first because they will blend. Now you see me using an eraser there. You can erase light pencil marks, although this is an oil-based medium. If you go outside the lines a little bit with just a couple light stray marks, you can get those off with one of these Statler erasers. So I find this a very relaxing artistic process, the colored pencils, especially since at a certain point, they're sort of like embossing powder when you heat it up. At a certain point with these Luminance pencils, 
the texture completely changes and they become more like paint, which is the the look that you actually end up with. And when that magic starts to happen, it's just so much fun and it's so rewarding the time that you've spent coloring your images. Now, one of the things that that I have to do <laughs> because I'm I'm blind, I can't see close up and I I can't see far away and it's just annoying is I have to take my glasses off to color. But that has a benefit because if I just move away from my image a little bit, since I am both nearsighted and farsighted, having my glasses off and looking at the image allows me to see it in sort of a more impressionistic way. And it lets me be better about kind of big swatches of color and where my shadows need to be darker without focusing on the little details. So I highly recommend being completely blind, both close up and far away, if you want to get a little more abstract with your colors. Now the second coffee cup is a nice sunny yellow, and I'm using sort of a burnt sienna to do the shading. Those two go together nicely, and it's a nice complementary to the blue. I ended up deciding what I wanted to do was use basically primary colors for these little cups. Those are always really pleasing to see together. But also you can put two analogous colors together in this order. And I just love the way that looks. So same process here. Start with your lightest white, obviously then go to yellow, then go to the burnt sienna color. And I'll, I'll post the actual color names and numbers in my blog post. But I'm just describing them in very general terms right now. These aren't the actual color names. Now I am putting a little bit of blue on the yellow cup and a little bit of yellow on the blue cup. I love colored reflections and colored shadows. And so that's something I like to do every time I have two colors near each other on two different objects. Now this is a brilliant red color. It's actually kind of a poppy color. And I noticed as I was coloring with this that it had sort of a very hard, rough feel to the pencil lead. And while different pigments and different colors do feel differently, there was definitely something wrong with this pencil and if you are coloring with a pencil and it feels like it's sort of scratching the surface of your paper just sharpen it and instantly it turned into the nice soft uh, creamy pencil texture that the other ones had so always try sharpening it if, if something feels kind of not quite right took me a little long to get that done but I did it I was sort of involved in what I was doing So you can see how pretty these three colors look together. And I tried to keep the primaries as, as pure as I could with the color selection that I had. This is a nice big set of pencils, so you have tons and tons of options. But I didn't want them muted. I wanted them sort of, sort of pure. I do like to leave some of the pencil lines in the middle of the highlight, the white highlight, because... I don't know, it just looks more realistic to me to have those little lines. Now the red also takes purple shading beautifully, as I said, and so I'm actually using the same pencil to shade the red cut that I used for the blue cut. Those two colors are beautiful together, especially on florals. If you have a nice violet and a nice bright red, they really play well together. So here I'm adding red to the yellow cup and a little bit of yellow to the red cup just to keep that little reflection game going and I really like the way those look that's the finished cups I think they're really really pretty now when I finished with these and they have nice light nice reflection nice shadow 
I did end up going in and putting a table for them to sit on. I didn't realize that I hadn't really finished the scene when I stopped the video. So I just did that with a white pencil and then I added some colored shadows as is my custom. And the little stamp with the cinnamon is from one of our My Paper Pumpkin stamp sets, which I just love. I could stamp that saying on everything. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks so much for watching.